here, this is how this animation is made. It's just a ballerina called ballerina with a pose mode uh, library and uh, yeah, just a sculpted head and a little bit of hair. It's by no means a high uh, quality product because I'm not a professional. <laughs> I'm just showing you how uh, you could make it. Uh, it's um, high contrast, high strength sun that I uh, put it in with the uh, scene. It's, uh, this is the preview screen. The sun was a very uh, high strength sun, 500,000, to get a nice uh, yeah, black and white graphical contrast, uh, like it's a yeah, kind of a cartoony look, but a quite nice look, I think, uh, quite, uh, quite simple uh, to achieve like this. Um, the scene is made of, uh, yeah, you can see the material preview normal uh, normal world and then the background uh, yeah normal world background and a very dark black uh, plane to to uh, um, get a slightly different color than the than the ballerina uh, because of the high uh, strength sunlight so this is how uh, the ballerina is made in a normal preview mode or in the in, uh, yeah, mm. simple, simple view. So this is a sculpted head I made, and then uh, with a yeah very low density hair put on top of it. But you see the sculpt is very, very, uh, very dense already, and uh, for my system, uh, it will crush in no time if it's a gets in the neighborhood of maybe a million uh, faces or something because it's uh, just a G4 NVIDIA 750 uh, video and 8 RAM memory so it's not really a large or large uh, uh, complicated uh, animations or something because uh, I will crush my system in no time so I try to keep it simple and uh, not too uh, too intense this is already quite intense. So this is the hair. Okay, it's very simple with a few uh, yeah, uh, faces are just randomly uh, uh, spread out. Uh, and a few uh, um, downward hanging uh, things, and there was a material that is uh, shaded very simply. Not uh, not not high class uh, stuff or something. It's by no means also meant as that you must not a professional animator or something so just uh, just to show you how it's made a little bit so like I, I would do it and yeah, I try to keep it uh, not too too high density so it won't crash my system and then that's a uh, yeah, solidify uh, uh, modifier on it and then display modifier with a texture in it uh, just a fur texture that I could find at this moment. Uh, I'm not a really great organized, uh, sublime person to find everything uh, in, in a moment's notice. So just uh, added a texture in the, f in the form of hair or kind of fur or furry texture. And then another display some modifier uh, underneath that. Uh, Uses the same texture, but uh, with slightly different uh, different settings, so it will change a little bit, and then you can um, change the, the the mapping of the of the uh, the image also, so uh, the scale or something or the rotation, how it's uh, projected on the, onto the hair, and then yeah, you can see it here. It's uh, just just to create some wild cur curls and just random uh, stripes and something, but the uh, triangles is just uh, we have faces 104, so that's very minimal. We have 52 faces, yeah, so it's very minimal everything. Uh, just to compensate for the very intense uh, 
density of the of the head. So that's how I made this uh, part of it. Yeah, and I changed also a little bit of the color and everything. So uh, it's uh, not exactly the same color, uh, but yeah, you can see how it how it uh, what kind of effect it is. It's very high density in the sunlight, with a little bit of dimples in her cheeks. So uh, that looks quite nice uh, if you compare it to the material uh, settings as well. It's very cartoon like, a black and white cartoon like, actually. And then she got pants, and then she sent the body in any case. So I uh, just changed a little bit the color for the pants and uh, gave her a t shirt with uh, some. Just uh, inserted and extruded uh, cubes, uh, and then uh, sharp, sharp edges to uh, create uh, part of a T-shirt and the neck and everything, and then subdivided uh, from uh, levels in the viewport three and the eventual render uh, on four. So you must also be very careful with that stuff. But and this is how I made her top. Uh, so it's kind of a, you add a clothes a modifier, cloth modifier onto it, yeah, and then you uh, you adjust it and everything, subdivide it and everything, and then you say apply as a shape key. So uh, I will show you how it's made. You can see it in the in the, the added part of it is a cloth modifier that's uh, on thousand, so you can press it and then it uh, and goes back to its eventual shape so in the, in the plane in the shape of a plane and then you can apply the uh, go back to thousand and then it will uh, crease in the in the form of the cloth that, that uh, you uh, first did with the first animation you can start the animator and then if you have your cloth modifier it will fall but you must pin it will fall down uh, like it uh, like it uh, belongs and then you must pin just make a vertex group with a few uh, vertexes that pins it on top of the, the the body and then I made the body a collusion and uh, the, the top a collusion and now I'm going to Add a meta rig so in the viewport display you can press it that it goes in front. When I added the meta rig, uh, I deleted a few bones just to keep it simple, so uh, uh, not too much bones in the hands and uh, on separate fingers. She doesn't have separate fingers, but now uh, that is what I did. So you select uh, everything and then you. Uh, parent it to the meta rig so you must first uh, select the object and then you select the meta rig and then you say uh, you you parent it to the to the meta rig and um, and then you can do separate objects like the head and the hair or different objects uh, they're not the same objects as the body and the cloth also so what you do, you select the meta rig, then you go to edit mode, then you select the bone. Yeah. So for the head, I will show you how it's done. You select the meta rig, then you go to edit mode. Edit mode, and in edit mode, you select the bone. Yeah. And it changes color a little bit. Then you go back to object mode, then you select, say for instance, now the head. Yeah go to the head and you select the, the meta rig yeah? and then you say control P and then go to select uh, parent to bone and then the selected bone uh, head will automatically parent to the selected bone that you selected in edit mode and you can check that because you have an uh, object part of the, the object head you can see in relations you can see the it's parented to the metal rig to this bone and this, the bone is called spine 06 and then you can check that also in your 
metal rig, if the bone is indeed called that. So you go back to edit mode and the selected bone will show up there. Spine 06, yes. So it, it is uh, connected now and it will follow the bone everywhere. And now we go to pose mode and now we select, for instance, a bone. Uh, and you can use a pose library. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to change a few bones around and then uh, rotate them and then select the whole rig and then add it to a pose library. So. Rotate this a little bit, rotate that, rotate this. Okay. And then you rotate another bone and another one to get a kind of a pose. Just uh, move the center of gravity so. The lady won't fall over just to like it, make it look logical. But I'm by no means not a professional animator or something, so I'm the, you must not uh, listen to my advice on animation or something. It's, uh, it's not really uh, my profession, so uh, there's a much better people that can advise you for that. So, and now you add a new, you select all the bones and say add new pose library, then you can change the name, for instance, high kick, and then you have a new uh, pose in your library, so you can change that with the I key of uh, when you uh, make an animation. So you go to pose and then you apply pose library pose, and then uh, pose changes into one of your pose libraries you did. That's how I made the animation a little bit. I made a pirouette and a, and a dance pose. So the first thing to make a pirouette and then a high kick. And that's not in the animation, but the pirouette. So I made it with those pose library uh, things. So you just uh, go to the frame you want and you add an eye and then you change the pose. But it's very important to do that in the pose mode. For uh, when you do the eye uh, and animation on the on the skeleton, but then so, but then the for instance rotation of the the skeleton I did with a separate empty, and then I parented the meta rig to the empty to make a rotation, and then it follows the empty and it. Uh, and it does the rotation for the rotation, so the empty. Select the empty, you see uh, in the bottom, uh, bottom part of it, you see the, uh, the rotation I did, yeah. And then the uh, the yellow uh, diamonds, or, or say the 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 eye uh, when it, when it changes the. Uh, uh, the position or rotation that transforms the empty. So at 360, and it's uh, past uh, the 90 or 87 mark, it goes into 355, 360. So it follows. Uh, you can follow the follows the rotation through. See. So the armature follows the rotation of the empty and show it here. And that's how the empty and then it changes, it rotates, and the armature follows. So that's how I did that. And that's uh, yeah, nearly a uh, conclu conclusion of uh, how it works, about how it works.